The Super Bowl, a pop culture extravaganza with the football game in the middle. Hi, I'm Brian Lilly with me, entertainment uh, editor Mark Daniels from the Toronto Sun. And Mark, um, what a spectacular event that was. I mean, I, I love the football game. It was old fashioned, grind them out, defensive play. It was hard. It went to overtime, all those fun things. But the pop culture side is just massive. I mean, look at all the concerts you had beyond just the Usher halftime show, there was a whole list of them. <laughs> you know what? This was the game where all of the pop culture worlds collided. You had Usher, as you just mentioned. You had Justin Bieber in the stands. You had Taylor Swift in the stands. You had LeBron James in the stands, Leonardo DiCaprio. And then, of course, there were a whole bunch of other concerts that took place before the football game even began. There was Post Malone. There was Gwen Stefani, Blake Shelton, Reba McIntyre singing the national anthem. Yeah, like, what, um, what a, a mishmash of different musical styles, different forms of entertainment. Yeah, for sure. I mean, listen, the NFL has, has, has leveraged this all season long with Taylor Swift. Is she going to be at the game? Is she not going to be at the game? Uh, you know, what's Travis's record with Taylor in the stands? How does he fare when she doesn't show up? Of course, all week people were talking about, is Taylor going to make it from her concerts in Tokyo? Brian, she played the night before in Tokyo, but because of time travel, she was able to get back to Las Vegas in time for kickoff uh, of the Super Bowl. And, and, and then she's there with uh, Blake Lively um, and, and, and someone I'm, I'm just learning about, Ice Spice. Ice Spice. Ice Sp Br Brian, what was funny was, was all the people around Taylor kept changing throughout the game. So at one moment, you'd see Ice Spice. The next would be Lana Del Rey. Miles Teller was somewhere in there as well. You know, online people were making these funny little memes where Taylor was put into, uh, you know, a roller coaster rides. Oh, I saw one with Splash <laughs> Mountain from Disney. Exactly. And then Jason Kelsey was there as well. But the funniest moment, Brian, was when Taylor was shown on the Jumbotron chugging a beer. And I, I mean, listen, I was impressed. It's been probably decades since I've chugged a beer, if I'm <laughs> going to be that, honest. That is a thing where if you're shown on the Jumbotron, a lot of people, normal people, will chug a beer. She said, I'm going to chug one just like a normal person. But uh, there was uh, a moment uh, that wasn't broadcast on TV, but I'm sure you've seen it online where on the Jumbotron, they went around and they showed the different celebrities. And I love the different reactions. Leonardo DiCaprio just pulling down his ball cap, pretending, oh, you can't see me. Justin Bieber acted like it was to kiss Cam and kisses his wife. Martha Stewart's that was waving. Great. <laughs> and then Jeff Goldblum's acting like he's never been on a camera before and he's jumping up and waving and, hey, I'm here. It was wild. Yeah. My, my favorite was actually Justin Bieber. Listen, Bieber was here last weekend at All Star uh, NHL at the NHL All Star Game here in Toronto, uh, and he was great. I mean, he was hamming it up. He wore this big puffy red coat. I'm sure yeah. you saw it. Every everybody saw that. But wasn't it cool to see him like kiss Haley and just ham it up for all the fans there? Yeah, I love that. Okay, so um, mixed reviews on the halftime show. I, I know some people loved it, others claiming it was boring. I thought it was good. It was a solid halftime show, I thought. It, was it up there with Rihanna's last year, which she did while pregnant? Maybe not, but it it's definitely was not a bad halftime show in, in my view. Run us through Usher's crew. Who did he bring out? Okay, so Usher had Alicia Keys in there. He brought out Ludacris, Little John. I think, listen, Brian, this was a halftime show for people. If you were born after the year 2000, this halftime show is probably not for you. Usher's celebrating the, the 20th anniversary of Confessions. Um, you know, for me, uh, it was a nice spectacle to look at. The music I found was a little bit boring. Uh, I want to see a rock and roll started band. with a banger off the top. He started yeah. out slow. Don't yeah, do that at a halftime show. Low key, it was low energy, um, but sure, it was nice to see him rolling around on the roller skates there. Uh, Ludacris's shoes, those were pretty wild. I don't know what he was wearing, a pair of moon boots, but um, I, I would give it maybe about a six out of 10, five and a half. Five, well, okay, so you, you'd be lower than me. Um, but, uh, you know, Super Bowl is the biggest stage for music artists uh, trying to 
promote a new product. He's got a new album coming out, Apple Music now sponsoring it. I, again, just a testament to how the Super Bowl is the collider of all of this. Let's talk about a somewhat football element, though. Um, went to overtime, won with just three seconds left by the amazing Patrick Mahomes. But the guy that forced Mahomes into overtime, the guy who was nearly took the game away from him, Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy, a guy who was drafted last, never supposed to make it in the league. And here he is now going head to head and and doing well against Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, just like Tom Brady before him, Kurt Warner, um, Brock Purdy is one of those amazing stories that people love to see and love to root for and get behind, I think. Uh, you know, listen, I was cheering for San Francisco. I wanted to see the 49ers win that Super Bowl. Um, but what a great story he's been all season long. And even going back to last season, he mm -hmm. played Tom Brady when Brady was still with the Bucks, and he beat Tom Brady. Uh, I don't know how many people remember that. And 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 he's still parlayed that this season. And, and I think, Brian, he's going to be great to watch in the years to come. Well, so uh, there was a meme going around ahead of time saying Brock Purdy's excited to be playing the Super Bowl because he can't afford Era's tickets to see Taylor Swift. Um, you know, the joke there is that because he was drafted last, he's still on a, a pretty low paying contract is my understanding. And uh, I think he needs to get his payday now. Well, like everybody, yeah. I mean, lock him up and keep him in place, just like they did in Baltimore with Lamar Jackson. Uh, you know, he's going to be the face of the NFL for many, many, many years to come. And and the 49ers should definitely just, just wrap him up and keep him there long term. You mentioned Brady. Uh, he was in an ad for Duncan's. You loved it. I didn't. <laughs> That's That was the, the best ad. Now, now Canadians... <laughs> Uh, wouldn't have had a chance to see this. Duncan does not have a presence or much of a presence in Canada. But this ad also featured Ben Affleck and Matt Damon uh, as they formed a boy band trio called the Dung Kings, uh, where they try to convince Jennifer Lopez uh, to add them onto one of her uh, tracks on her upcoming album. It uh, look, it, it was uh, ridiculous and outrageous, and maybe that's why you liked it. it was fun. I, I didn't didn't grab me the Uber Eats one. I like that one. Um, they had to. Well, they're buying. They're about... selling. They're selling the outfit, Brian. You can buy the Dunkings outfit, <laughs> and then Ben and uh, Ben actually also now has his own signature drink. So next time you're in Boston, you could try that as well. Oh, no. Look, the reason Dunkin' Donuts or the reason Starbucks is so successful, in my view, is that Dunkin' Donuts is awful. And that's why Americans turn to Starbucks so much in the States. I just I can't hack Dunkin' Donuts. Um, but we, you know, look, I understand why uh, we don't get to see those ads. Bell Media pays a fortune for the rights. They've got to earn their money back. Uh, but we don't sell the ads for as much in Canada and you don't get the companies putting in a lot of effort. There was one company that seemed to put in a, a bunch of effort or two, maybe um, Phoenix, which sells erectile dysfunction pills. They had a brand new big ad. And I guess the other one was Lay's and that's about it. Lay's use Mark Messier brought him back for the bet. You can't just try one campaign. That's a really, really funny ad. Doritos had one as well with Jerry D where they made fun of the fact that Canadians uh, don't get to see all the ads our, our American neighbors do. Yeah, I, I I just caught the end of that one. So I, I must have missed that ad. I know it ran a couple of times, but must have been uh, refilling the wings or the uh, the beers at that point. Mark, it uh, it was a blast. Now the long countdown to when football season begins. Thankfully, we're in Canada. So uh, for us, that's June, a few months without any football. Then the CFL starts, then college football, then the NFL, and I'm back to being happy.